Welcome, Victory Church. Happy New Year's Eve to you. It's so great to be with you. And uh, I'm excited to share what I feel that God wants to speak to you. And I pray that um, this word is a word of encouragement for you as we walk into another year. I can't believe that another year has come and gone. Here we are the day before New Year's. And uh, I'm sure many of you are getting ready to celebrate for New Year's Eve, and you're celebrating the new year tomorrow. And I don't know about you, but a lot of years in the past, I have looked at, uh, you know, the news specials or the sport athlete specials of the past year. We, you know, we remember, we reminisce about what happened in 2023 or any other year that we've had. And we look back and, and, and we remember things. And some of you, you're, you're remembering successes and you're remembering the heartache, perhaps, and the tough times, the good times, the great times, you know, the, the good, the bad, the ugly. You're looking back. It's a time to look back. It's a time to reflect. And then also on New Year's Eve, we look forward. We're saying, okay, it's a new year. And then, you know, you're looking at your calendar. You're looking at what's coming up this new year. You're, you've got goals and you have a vision, perhaps, for your life or uh, business, your finances, and of course, you know, people make those resolutions, especially the health resolutions. I'm going to go on that diet. I'm going to start exercising at the gym or at home. I'm going to buy all this equipment. So, uh, you know, it's a time to look back and it's a time to look forward uh, in New Year's Eve, and, and rightly so. And as I was preparing the message for uh, New Year's Eve and for Victory Church, I really was in prayer and I really sensed that God wants to speak specifically to Victory Church, but also generally to anyone that has trusted in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want you to turn in your Bibles with me if you can. Uh, if you can't, that's okay if you're just listening to Luke uh, chapter 24. And we're going to look at something today. And I really believe that what God wants to bring across to you and to communicate to you is that 2024 is going to be a great year in the sense that God is wanting to mold you. God is wanting to establish you. God is wanting you to become steadfast. And I believe that this coming year for your life is going to be a year where you will have great confidence and great faith to such a point that you will be able to have victory in your life. I know we're called Victory Church, but I'm really sensing a theme from the Lord for you uh, as I prepared this message. And we're going to go into something in, in just a moment. We're going to talk about the Lord. But I just really believe that this is a year that God is wanting you to experience the abundant life. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, and the Bible says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know the enemy comes after our life to try to wreck our lives, to harass us, to bring us down, to keep us bound. And Jesus said, but I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. And I really believe that just as the children of Israel were going into the promised land, God promised them abundance, but it took some fighting. It took some resistance. It took some conquering over some enemies. And when God called them to do that, the promise was to enjoy the promised land. But before the promised land was to be experienced, there was some fighting. And there, was, there needed to be some faith and confidence. There needed to be, I really believe that this is a year that your feet are going to, you're going to learn to have your feet planted and to stand firm against the enemy so much so that you're going to be able to experience victory and an abundance like you haven't before. And there's some principles that we're going to see and actually a promise that we're going to see and how you can do that. Now, as you experience from the Lord confidence and faith and being steadfast and standing firm. And listen, I really believe so strongly that this is a year that the enemy won't be chasing you. You will be able to overcome and chase the enemy down. There's going to be such confidence and faith and victory in your heart, in your mind, in your family, and in, in your life, there's a transformation in your life that you will be able to overcome things that have always tried to harass you, overcome you, and keep you down. And I believe that for your life. And I really believe that that is the message that God wants to speak to you today. Now, the firm foundation that God wants to plant you on is a foundation none other than Jesus Christ. 
And Jesus wants to show you that you can have faith and you can have confidence, but there's an underlying foundation that is underneath confidence and faith, and that is the peace of God. And I really believe that the victory that you're going to have this year, I really believe that there's some areas that you're going to walk in in your life I really believe in your life that you're going to experience a peace that's going to give you a confidence and a faith, and you're going to feel so steadfast, and you're going to feel like there is such victory over things in your life, and it's because you have this God-given peace that causes you to have that confidence, to have that faith, and allow you to attack the enemy instead of allowing him to attack you, if you understand what I'm saying. It's time for us to stand it's, it's time for you to stand. It's time for you to, to take authority over the enemy. And I believe that peace, as you, as you fight for the peace that God has already given to you, as you fight for that, as you stand in that, you will be able to see amazing things happen in this new year. Now, let me just say something to you about the peace of God, okay? I want to just a few things before we get into it. First of all, It is the will of God for you to experience the peace of God and for God's peace to rule and reign in your life. Colossians 3.15, the the apostle Paul wrote, he said, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And that word rule literally means govern. It means to lead. It means uh, to oversee. It means to, uh, peace is the leader in your life. If you have the peace of God, no matter what's going on in your life, you will be able to have victory. You'll be able to walk in the authority and the victory and, the, and be in triumph, triumphant over the enemy in your life. Those things that you're praying for, those things that you're believing for, uh, you know, there are storms that come in life. There are uh, different circumstances that come in our life. I really believe that God's will is for you to have the peace of God. And by the way, the peace that Jesus gives to you is not dependent on the circumstances around you. It's not dependent on your environment. It's not dependent on what's going on on the outside, even though that God desires to do the miraculous and, and, and answer prayer and to um, and, you know, calm the storm. He's wanting to change circumstances, but what peace really does, the peace of God really does, is it changes you through the circumstances no matter what. Peace is steadfast because it's the peace of God. God's peace keeps you steadfast. It keeps you grounded. It keeps you secure. It keeps you calm. It keeps you confident. And that's the peace that that Jesus desires for you to experience. Now, here's the other thing. The enemy is wanting to steal your peace because if he knows he could steal your peace, he will steal your confidence. He will steal the faith uh, that you, that God desires for you to have in his word and what he says in his nature. And so the enemy is wanting to steal your peace. So there are three things that we're going to look at that we need to know and trust in order to fight and to, to have that peace of God to remain in our life no matter what's going on on the outside. And God wants to set you free that way. Now, let's look at Luke 24. I haven't turned there yet, but let's turn in this passage, and I want to kind of give you just a quick synopsis, quick background of what is going on. Now, Jesus has just risen from the grave, okay? He rose from the, de- the, the dead, and uh, so Jesus is risen, and uh, at the end of Luke chapter 24, there's a couple followers of Jesus that were traveling from Jerusalem to a town called Emmaus, about seven miles outside of Jerusalem. And they were traveling, they were talking about all the events that just happened. I mean, an amazing event just happened. I mean, there was the crucifixion, and, and Jesus was being uh, scourged and crucified, and he died, and he was buried. And, and uh, you know, there was such chaos, chaos during that time. And uh, Jesus rose from the grave, and, and so these two followers of Jesus were talking about it. And all of a sudden, without knowing it, a man comes walking with them, listening to what their conversation is. And to make a long story short, it was Jesus. He, Jesus finally revealed that it was himself to these two followers of Jesus. And so as they were walking to Emmaus, they were walking to Emmaus. They stopped in their tracks after their encounter with Jesus. They went back to Jerusalem and they wanted to tell the disciples about this. And they are in the uh, in Jerusalem wanting to talk to the disciples as they are in verse 36. So let's pick up in Luke 24, verse 36. It says, 
Now, as they said these things, as they explained that they met Jesus, who is alive, to the disciples, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you have seen. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, verse 44, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, thus it is written and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Now let's go to verse, I want you to show you in verse 38, when Jesus appears to the disciples, he says in verse 38, he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? It's amazing to me as we open up and we look at the scriptures here and we look at this passage that first of all, Jesus had the guts. <laughs> I say this, when I read this the first time, I'm like, Jesus, you had the audacity to ask the disciples, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? You know, I can imagine what the disciples in that moment thought. Jesus appears to them. First of all, it says that they were terrified and frightened. This isn't something that happens every day, by the way. I don't know about you, but no one just appears to us every single day. It's a, it's a rare occasion, right? It, if anything, it's a, a not happen ever occasion. And Jesus appears, they're frightened, they're terrified. And Jesus has the audacity to ask, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise? I can imagine the disciples thinking, wait a second, wait, wait, wait. We've been with you for three and a half years. We have seen you do miracles. We have seen you walk on water. We have gotten to know you. We have begun to trust you. We've loved your fellowship. You have taught us. You have led us. You've done all these things in our life. And all of a sudden, all hell has broken loose. All of a sudden, you're arrested. You're betrayed by Judas. Uh, a, a number of soldiers come and arrest you. We see them bind you up. We see you before uh, the chief priests. We see people punching you. We see people pull your beard. Then the crown of thorns. You know, we're terrified. We're running away. And, and all these things are happening to you. And then you're crucified on the cross. And we thought that you're the Messiah that would lead us and help us and, and, and free us from Roman rule during this time. And, all, you know, this is only happening in Jesus just a couple of days. I mean, we're talking about an emotional roller coaster. They were having a, a, a supper with Jesus. It was precious. It was powerful. They had great fellowship with God. And all of a sudden, everything happens. And Lord, you die. And then you're buried. And then you're gone. And we're terrified and we're lost and we're confused and we're sad. That's why we're here in Jerusalem. We don't know what's going on. And we have all these emotions and, and we don't know what to feel. We don't know what to think. Have you ever felt like that in life? You know, when Jesus is coming to you today and he's asking you, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your heart? And God's not being just, you know, he doesn't have the audacity. He's not being insensitive. What, first of all, he's asking is, why are you troubled? Why are you having doubts in your life? What has life thrown at you? Share with me. Pour your heart out to me. I love you. I'm here. And I want to hear what, what, what is happening in your life. Why are you troubled? But also, I believe that Jesus asked his disciples, just as he's asking you today, why are you troubled? 
troubled and why do doubts arise in your heart? Because in a moment, Jesus is about to dispel all doubt. He's about to assure them. He's about to show them how to fight for this peace, how to receive this peace that's, that comes from him. And it comes from knowing and trusting three powerful things that Jesus exemplifies, that Jesus does, does right in front of his disciples to assure them and to show them his love and to show them his comfort the same way he does for you today, this New Year's Eve. You could be looking back in the past. You could be thinking of what, what has gone on in 2023, your regrets. Maybe there's some brokenness. Maybe there's relationships that broke that you didn't see coming. Maybe you're in a financial mess. Maybe you're looking ahead to 2024 and you're like, I don't even want 2024. If it's like 2023, I don't want anything to do with 2024. And Jesus is saying, why are you troubled and why do you doubt? And there are three things we need to know and we need to trust in order to have this peace that will give us the confidence and the faith to move forward and to find victory and to overcome those things in our life. And the first thing that we need to know and to trust is to know and trust the power of Jesus. Now think about this for a moment. If we understand the power of Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus has all power and authority. The book of Philippians chapter 2 says he's the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, whether it's in heaven, on earth, or under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus has all power and authority, and he proves it to his disciples by showing up. In other words, Jesus died a horrible death on the cross for our sin, but it was a horrible death. It was torture. It was torment. And he died. He was in the grave. He was a dead man, God. And when he died, the Bible says that he actually rose from the grave. Let me ask you a question. Who has the power to overcome death itself? Who has greater power than Jesus Christ? You see, Jesus was saying, look, you don't have to be troubled. You don't have to doubt anymore because I not only overcame diseases as you saw, you know I had authority over nature. You saw my authority over demons, but even death itself has no authority or power. If I can rise from the dead and I could rise and destroy death, I could destroy hell, I could absolutely pummel the enemy because I have risen from the dead, what other thing is more powerful than that? My power is greater than any. Even death bows to me. In fact, if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that Jesus even said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he die, shall live. Jesus shows that he has all power and all authority. There's no power like Jesus. And so we could, t- we could have peace no matter what we're going through. No matter what we're looking at in 2024, no matter what obstacles we have to overcome, those addictions that try to torment you, I'm telling you, it's the, it's the day of having confidence and faith to overcome because he has power. You could trust in his power. It's resurrection power. What do you need a resurrection in, in your life? Jesus is that resurrection. Secondly, here today, not only does Jesus show his disciples that they could trust in his power, but to trust in his promise? You know, it's interesting that Jesus, he talked to them, he assured them by going to the word. Verse 44, he said, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all these things must be fulfilled. And Jesus reminded them the law of Moses, and he spoke to them about the prophets and taught to them out of the Psalms, out of the, the, what we call the Old Testament today. Jesus went to the inspired word of God to remind his disciples, look at, I'm reminding you, this is what I told you about. Go to my word, go to my promise, and in my promises you will find great peace that will get you confidence, that will give you great faith. This is a year that you need to begin to believe what God says more than your circumstance. You need to believe what God says about healing over your disease. It doesn't matter how long you've struggled with your addiction. It is a year that you believe that you have the confidence and the faith to overcome because you have great peace. You have confidence. You have assurance. You have security that because of his promise, you are able to overcome these things in life. 
We need to believe and to trust in the word of God. And I'm going to tell you right now, you will never experience peace until you read, until you receive, and until you apply the word of God and to believe that this is, these are the words of God that you could trust. And when you trust the word of God and when you allow the word of God to become a part of your life, it will give you the peace to understand it will give you the peace in order for you to have the faith to believe in what God says. Jesus is the word, and as we trust in what he says, we will believe and we will have that peace. And so we need to trust and to know in the power of God. We need to trust and know in the word of God, which is his promise, and to rely on his promise. And whatever, I want to challenge you, whatever obstacle you're going through and what you're trying to believe, go to that issue. Go to, the, go to that promise that overcomes that obstacle in your life and begin to read it, begin to meditate on it, receive it for yourself, begin to even confess that word and just, just hang on that word and to trust God. I want to tell you, the word of God will give you that peace. And lastly, how do, I, how, do I, how do I gain this peace in order for me to be confident and to stand firm and to be steadfast? How do I overcome? How do I find victory through peace? It's not only through the power of God, not only through the promise of God, but it's through his presence. It's amazing to me that in Luke chapter 24, I love verse 36, it says, now is they said these things, these followers of Jesus were telling the disciples that they met Jesus. The Bible says Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. When you know and you consciously understand that Jesus himself is with you, peace begins to overcome and to well up in your life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. When you know that God is with you, you know, we just, <coughs> excuse me, we just celebrated Christmas. And what do we talk about with Christmas? Emmanuel, God with us. That's his grace. He comes to us. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that the earth is groaning for redemption. And even you're watching here today and you're groaning for redemption. You need redemption. You need, you need saving. You need a setting of free in your life. And you need that peace in order for you to move forward in 2024. I'm telling you right now, when you know and trust in the presence of Jesus, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what the circumstances. You will have lasting peace. And Jesus said in the Gospel of John, he said, My peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. I leave you my peace. And I want to close with Matthew 24. And, and so we need to understand, and uh, I'm telling you, God wants to do so much in this new year. But in order for you to overcome and to have victory, in order, in order for you to really live the abundant life that Jesus is talking about, you need that peace that only comes from God. And in Mark chapter 4, I want to read this. Remember when Jesus was crossing the Sea of Galilee? I want to read Mark chapter 4, verse 35. I want to close with this passage. The Bible says, On the same day when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep, on a pillow. And I know what some of you are thinking. I wish I could sleep like that. I mean, talk, I mean in a, Jesus is in a storm and he's sleeping. You're like, how in the world can he do that? And they awoke him and said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and, see, and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? We see this storm that they are in crossing the sea. Jesus is in the boat with the disciples. It was so windy, so stormy that the waves were crashing into the boat, that the boat was actually beginning to sink. And the disciples are crying. They're like, oh, we're going to die. We're going to die. Have you ever felt like you've been in a circumstance like that? Maybe you feel like 2023 is like that. You're like, oh, I'm looking at 2024, and I don't know. You, you, you may say, you know what? It may be a good year, but just being uncertain of the future scares me. I don't have a peace. 
I don't have confidence. I don't have faith. I don't feel like I could stand firm. I don't, I feel like I'm shaky. I don't feel like I could overcome. And see, Jesus was in the storm with the disciples and the disciples said, are we going to sink? Lord, we're perishing. Don't you care? And it's amazing to me that Jesus was asleep. You know what I learned from this passage? I remember the Lord showing me, you know, obviously we know that Jesus was with the disciples, but you know, Jesus was asleep because he was confident and rest assured and had peace. He had peace that he was going to go to the other side because the Bible says that he says, whatever the father tells me, I do. And he's crossing to the other side because he knew the father was directing him. The spirit of the Lord was directing him to cross that sea. He knew he would go to the other side. He knew the presence of his father. He knew the power of of almighty God. He understood that he was at rest. He was at peace. He had confidence. He had faith that they would cross no matter what type of storm would come. He rest assured and what he was teaching his disciples is that, yes, listen, you say, disciples, I I am asleep, not because I don't care. I am asleep to show you that I have peace. And if I have peace and I have no uncertainty and I know what I'm doing and I I have confidence and I know that we're going to cross to the other side. And if I am with you, you can have the confidence in my word. I said that we're going to go to the other side. I have the power and the authority to stop the wind, to stop the circumstances, to speak peace into those horrible things and I am also here with you my presence hasn't left and you're going into 2024 let me just challenge you and encourage you you could have the peace of God you could have the peace of God by trusting in his power by trusting in his promises and by trusting that he will never leave you and he will never forsake you that you could find your shelter and your security and your hope in him. And the truth is, if you're watching this and you say, man, I, I, this is the first time I've watched this video. I, it's the first time I've ever visited Victory Church. And I want this peace. The truth is, you can't have the peace of God until you have peace with God. And the beautiful thing is that what, what happens is that sin has separated us from God, which causes us not to have peace in life. The Bible says that the earth is groaning for redemption. And the truth is, we all need redemption and you need redemption. And redemption, redemption is, it is a setting of free. It's a ransom that is paid for your freedom. Because, see, we are all bound by sin. And Jesus paid the ransom of sin and death and hell by, by, by dying on the cross, by taking your sin and my sin upon himself so that we could go to heaven and be assured to go to heaven. Because what happens is Jesus, who became sin for us, gives us his righteousness as we come to him the way we are. And we realize that Jesus paid for our sin. And by faith, we receive Jesus as our Savior and confess him as our Lord. And you're here and you're you're watching this video and you're like, man, I need a relationship with God. Let me ask you a question. If you were to die in the next five minutes, would you know without a shadow of a doubt that you would be in heaven? You say, you know what? I don't think so. Did you know that you could end 2023 in the greatest way that you could ever end any year? And it's the greatest beginning. The Bible says it's a new beginning because you become a new life. Because all of your sin is forgiven that you become a child of God and you have the assurance and the peace that you have a relationship with God and that you will live eternally with Jesus. If you want to accept Jesus Christ for the first time today, can you just repeat this prayer? Just say, Lord Jesus. You could just pray it out. Just say, Lord Jesus. I realize I'm a sinner. I have failed you. I have sinned against you and your holiness. I ask you, God, to forgive me. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross. I believe that the blood that, the blood that you shed on the cross was, was because of my sin, that you took my punishment. You took my pain. You took my penalty because you love me. I thank you that you love me even after all I've done. And Jesus, right now, I ask you to save me. Come into my life. I receive you as Savior. I trust only in you to save me. I put my full dependence on the cross. And I thank you and believe that you have risen from the dead. And you live forevermore. 
In your name I pray, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, Jesus has forgiven all sin. He has received you into his family. You are assured eternal life. Christian, I want to, believer, I want to challenge you, no matter who you are, whether you just accepted Jesus or whether you're watching this and you're part of Victory Church, I, I believe and bless you with great things in 2024. I believe in confidence, being firm and steadfast. And you will have great peace by trusting in the power of Jesus, trusting in his promise, and trusting in his presence. In Jesus' name, amen.